Six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice they cried out, O Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your hands, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. O Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson and of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O help me, hasten to aid me. My 
my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to, to, to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house, I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but those but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said to him in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave, giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, 
and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. And after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. And then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arraigned a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they had laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hands to his sword and drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scripture be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The 
The high priest rose and addressed them. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver in the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites. And they paid it out for the potter's field just as the Lord had commanded him. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with the righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They said to they all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. 
when Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cord around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him in the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, and to come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He did not save himself. So he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. In about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lena sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for life. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice. He gave up his spirit. Please kneel. Please stand. Behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking over from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the other mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. 
taking the body. Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, you remember that this imposter, while I still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and kill him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposter would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd be willing to bet that for most of us, this Palm Sunday is like no other Palm Sunday that we've ever experienced before in many different ways. One being that there are no palms here. Um, usually we begin the Mass by starting outside or in a procession with the palms and singing along with the beautiful sisters the song that was sung at the beginning of Mass, Hosanna to the Son of David, this triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem and without the palms it seems a little bit off. No, there are no palms. Uh, the orders have been canceled from the company that we get our palms from so even this afternoon there were people coming thinking they might be able to get palms but there are no palms this year. And so it should just drive home even more so this message of what we are celebrating. Maybe even remind us of an emptiness that is happening right now this emptiness of entering into the passion of Jesus Christ. And as a matter of fact, Lent itself is a, is a means of emptying us, huh? Emptying us of our own selfishness, of our own uh, wants and desires, and then entering more purely, in a sense, into the Paschal Triduum. This Sunday, this Palm Sunday, um, basically inaugurates Holy Week and the paschal mysteries that we'll celebrate in the life, passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But maybe as we wish that we had palms in our hands and can think of the times that we've had palms, and since we don't have palms in our hands today, maybe symbolically what we can lay before Jesus, what we can wave triumphantly for Jesus are things in our lives that we want to just lay down to better prepare ourselves for the Paschal Triduum. So to just think about that for a moment to yourself, what is it that you want to lay down before Jesus? What is it that you want to just empty yourself of? Even wave it in front of Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, take this in your triumph. Lord Jesus, take this in your victory. There certainly is a sense of that as we would wave the palm branches and in this entry that we would normally hear about of Jesus on this Palm Sunday, this victory. But the people in that simple gesture of waving those palm branches were in a sense waving the victory of Jesus Christ over sin. Waving the victory of salvation over death, life over death. And so I think in that same way, even though we don't have palms in our hands, we too can wave these things of our lives before Jesus that we need to be emptied of the things that we need Jesus Christ to be victorious over for us, to lay those down on the road as Jesus comes meek and humble and riding on a donkey. Jesus' triumph looks so different than anything else. But this Palm Sunday looks so very different. In fact, I am almost convinced that this Palm Sunday and this Holy Week 
this sacred triduum might be one of the most powerful sacred triduums that you've ever experienced and that you will ever experience in your life. My brothers and sisters, I think Jesus is inviting us in this particular time on Palm Sunday of the year of our Lord 2020 to enter into the passion more profoundly, more intentionally, to enter into the mystery of what we are about to celebrate in these next few days. And if you ask me, in the emptiness and in the sorrow and the difficulty and the trial of everything going on with the coronavirus, and attempts to, to try and stay home and to not be out amongst people, to, to being told not to be at mass and gather as a group in the church. It is here, in this sacred Twitterwum this year, that I believe you can unite yourself more intimately to Jesus. That Jesus is inviting us into a deeper mystery because of our own suffering. In our own suffering, Jesus is, is taking that up with him, uniting that to the cross in glory with him as we celebrate the Passion so that we can rise, so that we can have hope. Pope Emeritus Benedict constantly talked about that so often that in our Christian faith, this Paschal Triduum above all things gives us hope. Above all things as we're united to Christ in his crucifixion, we are given hope in the resurrection. We are given hope now, today, amidst this pandemic. We're given hope in Jesus Christ. As you read the Passion reading today, this beautiful Passion reading, one of the things that always comes to my mind is one of my favorite prayers that really puts into perspective what we just heard. And this prayer is from St. Ignatius of Loyola, and it's called the Suchipe. And that prayer says this, praise this, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, blood of Christ, inebriate me, water from the side of Christ, wash me, passion of Christ, strengthen me, O oh, good Jesus, hear me, within thy wounds hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee, from the wicked, foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me, and bid me to come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this prayer reminds me of each and every moment of the Passion and how we as a church have always taught that as Jesus walked his way um, to the crucifixion, this via dolorosa, this sorrowful way, Jesus walked that path with us on his heart. Every drop of blood that fell from him was dropped for us. Every ounce of life that he gave on that cross was an ounce of life that he gave for us. Because Jesus wants us to live, not to die. St. Paul in the second reading today uh, reminded us that Jesus, although he was God, although he was eternal and had every power in heaven, he humbled himself. Did not deem to be exalted, but that he might be humbled like a slave. That he might give his life the sinless one for the sinners, that we might know the glory of the cross. You see, many people who don't believe, many people who don't follow the way of Christ might look at the cross and say, that's foolishness. Might look at the cross and say, what in the world are you Christians doing? Look at what's going on in the world. You should be trying to save yourselves. You should be trying to, to stock up food and toilet paper and everything that's going on. And no, Jesus says, come here. Place yourself here. Place yourself in my side. Because I did this for you. I have humbled myself to be human like you, although I am the Son of God, and I have come to save you, each and every one of us. He has come to save us. 
Come to redeem us. Come to take away whatever it is that is weighing on us today. So my brothers and sisters, even though we have no palm branches, even though we are confined to our homes and not able to come and celebrate this amazing and life-saving Paschal banquet of the Eucharist, we can still unite ourselves to Jesus. We can take those words of Pope Emeritus Benedict to heart and have hope and enter more profoundly, more intimately into these Paschal days, into these days where we can maybe set aside um, maybe even social media as much as we even use that to get these masses out, to set aside social media, to turn off the television, to set aside the things that are probably only causing more worry and anxiety in us, like the news, and take up the cross with Christ, and offer and unite anything that's going on in your heart to Jesus, to lay that down before him as he triumphantly walks in a deeper way into your life, as he unites himself to you and his humanity and your humanity, as he brings his sinlessness into your sinfulness, and as he redeems you and makes you whole again and gives you that great hope of the Easter promise. This is what we prepare ourselves for today. This is the triumph that we already look for. It's not hindsight 2020, knowing what happened then. It's foresight 2020, knowing what's about to happen. Knowing that hope will restore us to these very sacraments that have been taken away from us. Knowing that Christ's victory will always be a victory over death. That Christ will always win. That evil will not prevail. Please, God, give us the strength to enter into this triduum, this holy and paschal time, that we might come out of it at Easter with a greater sense of hope and Christian charity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Together we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that God hears and answers all of our prayers and that unites him to the cross of his son, Jesus Christ, we offer these petitions. For the church all around the world, following the Savior during Holy Week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peoples of all races and nations who seek peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer mental, physical, or spiritual anguish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of penance, reflection, and gratitude during these chosen days, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For the gentle repose of the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mass intention this evening, the repose of the soul of Thomas Noonan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, hear and answer these our prayers and all the prayers we offer you in the silence of our hearts. Unite us to the aching and sorrowful heart of Christ as he draws us close to you through these Paschal mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, 
and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your, beloved, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James and John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysologus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things may be, be, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering with every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread into his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we, ce o, therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, 
the bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, your sacri the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your a holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, also your servants, whom, you, who has, whom have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. We pray with those at home an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit bow down for the blessing look we pray O lord on this your family for whom our lord jesus christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever amen and may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen go and announce the gospel of the lord Thanks be to God.